morning it's great to be with you here again for the lesson last week we had a, an exciting lesson where we saw god rescuing the israel and what was amazing is the way god timed their crossing from in the red sea and, ev and eventually they, they managed to cross the other side and now we see now that they're free from the egyptians and now they are on their own and now they are under the guidance of God. So what, what happens? Uh, today we see one of the key lessons that God is going to teach them. They'll be in a long journey to Canaan, and in that long journey, they have to learn one key thing, and that is obedience. And so today our lesson, which comes from uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 16, is on obedience. And our lesson is obedience is better. So what is obedience? There are many views on obedience. We sometimes think uh, diso disobeying God always brings trouble. Uh, think of whether that is true. God never punishes sin. And then the another view on obedience is that God does not like children to be too happy. That's why he sets so many rules. I cannot have fun and obey God at the same time. That's another view on obedience. And then one of the rules that is even common even to adults is that God rules are too hard. So we'll see whether these views hold at, uh, by the end of this lesson. So we start off, and uh, what are we going to learn today? Is that God rules were for the good of the Israelites, and two, obedience was, was, their, was their way to their blessing. We'll also have some verses at the end of this lesson to see how obedience is of benefit to us. So uh, the Israelites now are close to the desert, as we say, there were thousands of them because they had multiplied in big numbers. So there were women, there were children. So there were many of them. And they had carried food with them. So you can imagine by the time now they had crossed the, the Red Sea, they didn't have any food. They had finished their food supplies. And now they're in the desert. And this desert, there's no food at all. So, of course, hunger sent seed. And so the Israelites uh, again forgot that God had uh, what God had done for them. And instead of going to God, they complained to Moses. And they, have, they had very harsh words to, to Moses. If we read uh, chapter 16, verse 2 to 3, you, you see, and this, this is what they say to Moses, I quote, If we only had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, then we sat around pots of meat and ate of the food we wanted. But you brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. These were very harsh words to Moses, knowing how far God had done for them. And what do we see next? Moses, of course, turns to God, uh, which is the right thing. And um, God came in, as usual, and uh, God spoke to, to them. God appeared to them in a crowd, as you can see in that picture, and spoke to the Israelites directly. And he said, I've heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at least you'll eat meat, and the morning you'll be filled with bread, that then you'll know that I'm the Lord your God. So he provided actually what they were willing, <laughs> wishing for. They wanted meat. So he provided a lot of meat in terms of uh, quails that came in, into, into the desert. I don't know where they appeared from. And then God also provided something amazing. There was manna. And where did the manna come from? The manna came from, uh, from heaven. And this was a sign that is uh, God who was actually providing. And God was their provider. And one, the, the things that we need to note from this uh, from the provision now came the some few, just simple rules that God set at the beginning. And these were, one is that everyone had to gather their own food. At least you had to do something for, for, your, for, your own, for your own self. So they had to gather their own food, everyone for themselves, and everyone was to gather what they needed. So you, you take your own, what you really need uh, yourself. Also, they were just to gather just enough. I think here God was guarding against gratony and dependence on him. So you, you could not keep something and, uh, like you do so that you can have a leftover in the morning. And then, <coughs> uh, you know, you, yeah, that means, sorry, uh, you have to save, you could not save for the next day. And that is uh, chapter 16, verse 19. And what happens, of course, some people disobeyed. So what happens to people who disobeyed and gathered food and for the next day? When they disobeyed, uh, for the next day, the food was full of maggots and worms, so it was really, uh, it was spoiled. Then the next one that was uh, quite interesting is that the, on the Sabbath, uh, God allowed them to gather for two days because they were supposed to rest. 
Then some guys also, of course, thought, uh, you know, uh, God brings his food every day, so we don't have to gather for, for Sunday. Then what happens on Sunday? There was no food, so they, had, uh, they were hungry. Remember that everyone was gathering from themselves, so they didn't have any food. So what do you think they did the next week? Of course, they were the first ones to obey, because they didn't want to face the, the hunger. So in all this, uh, it's, uh, it's that we see that it's good to obey God's rules. It's for our own benefit. And what, how can we apply this today? There are some verses that in the Bible that we can apply. One of the verses is Ephesians 4.32, which teaches about kindness. And this applies to us now when we're at home, we're living with our siblings and also other people around us. It's good to be kind. And I read the verse, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Another one as you can apply, again, is on anger. Same from same Ephesians 4.26. In your anger do not sin, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So you don't hold uh, unforgiveness, you don't hold anger, you don't let issues slip past one day. It's always good to, have, to solve everything. And then the other one is, children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. You have now a duty to obey your parents at this time. And uh, you know, for, for your own benefit, so the Bible says that when you obey your parents, you will have a longer life. And uh, one that Jesus gave, and I think we all know it, is that love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And we always say that love is one of the greatest commandments. So as we come to an end, we see that our main verse, as from the moment verse, is that for our blessings uh, will come to those who obey God. And it's from Deuteronomy 28 verse 2. So as we, as, we, as we settle down, I think last week we forgot to give you the pamphlets. It's good for you to go through this, uh, uh, the issue what we give you. We are sending it, we are, we are scanning it to you. So what you do is uh, on your own, please complete uh, this first part. Take your time, read, go back and read uh, Exodus chapter 16 and complete this section. And also still reflect, this section is for you, it's more of quiet time for you so that you can reflect on the lesson and get your own understanding. And then there's uh, some exciting activity also that you will do is some words you will find that, uh, that, would, that would really help to, uh, you know, to enhance the lesson today about, uh, in, in, uh, about obedience. And it's mainly from Psalms 23. And then it's good to speak to your mom and dad and uh, so that you can get the view uh, about, <coughs> uh, about obedience to God. So thank you so much, and let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you, and we give you praise, and we are grateful that uh, you always give us a chance to obey you, and also more than giving us a chance to obey you, you also uh, have given us the Holy Spirit to help us in the obedience journey, because it's not easy because we view rules as hindrances. Uh, that is how we view it as in our own personal view. But God, you've given us a spirit that guides us. So we pray, Lord, that we always be sensitive and always uh, seek to obey you because it's all for our benefit in the, in the long run. We're grateful, Lord, and we look forward, Lord, to having a great week. And as we interact, as we do our own personal study, Lord, we pray that you continue speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.